being conservative and being Christian in Hollywood does not necessarily work. So when this book came out, I looked at myself right before I hit publish. I'd look at the reflection in the computer. I go, all right, well, I'm no longer going to be a Marvel movie star. And I click publish because Hollywood doesn't tolerate it. You know, it's tolerance as long as you agree with what they say. And so with this book, with my political beliefs and faith-based standpoint, that's just giving them another round of ammunition. It's a lot of rejection in the world. It's not about focusing on the rejection and the negativity, rather than focusing on the positivity and being optimistic about what the future could hold. Really inspired by your book. You showed it to me here. What made you get into writing this book? Yeah, so I was homeschooled through second grade all the way through my graduation. And my mom asked me, where do I want to go to college when I graduated? And I looked at her and I said, I don't really feel a need to go to college. I wanted to be an actor. I still do. And I'm yeah. pr like pursuing it, but you don't need a degree to be an actor. Right. You know, it's not really that crucial. Like you would need a degree to be a doctor or a lawyer. You know, or you'd be surprised. We're giving things. degrees out for just about anything Pretty now. Much. And most students think they need a degree for something, but mm -hmm. go ahead. Exactly. Yeah. And so I looked at her and said, I don't really want to be going to college if I'm going to be trying to be an actor and focusing on my social media career and everything like that. And she said, that's great, but I want you to do something with your time. And so I've always been politically involved and politically inclined debating people from college professors. I was 14 years old on an airplane and I was sitting next to a college professor who was looking over and I had this little political pamphlet right before the 2016 election was called. And we just striked up a conversation. I find out that he is a history professor at Pepperdine, wow. the Christian university over there in Malibu. And so we're talking and he brings up the fact that he voted for Hillary. And I was looking at him at 14 years old and I was, I'm thinking, all right, history professor, Pepperdine Christian College votes for Hillary. So we're talking and we're talking and I ask, all right, so you know, you know about Saul Alinsky, right? As a history professor. And he goes, no, who's that? <laughs> and so I explained to him, Saul Alinsky, you know, the guy who dedicated his life to the devil, yeah. wrote a play called Oliad that he dedicated to Lucifer, that Hillary Clinton wrote her senior thesis on. And so this guy who's voting for this candidate, who's a history professor at a Christian college, doesn't know this. And from that moment, it clicked. And so I sat down, not going to college, I decided to write a book. And so the book itself is a sarcastic political dictionary. So it's aimed at a younger audience. Like you said, America, people have the idea that we're not, that we are no longer promoting greatness, that we're no longer raising a great generation. And so this book aims at pushing kids in the right step because right. people want to get involved. And politics is such a harsh realm to be in. You know, right. the political sphere is just so degrading and it's so, mm -hmm. it just beats down on you until you have nothing left. Yeah. I love humor. I'm a comedian, <laughs> right? So I wanted to find a way to include politics and sarcasm together. And so I did. So the book is very lighthearted, but it's also educational, it's informative, and it's humorous. So people not only will get a laugh when they read it, but they also learn, you know, because yeah. so many people are getting involved and I do social media. So I see kids posting and they have no idea what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> right. They're posting a random link promoting yeah. a cannibalism or some crazy thing like yeah. that. And I'm like, dude, and I know you, I know you personally, but you should <laughs> not be promoting this. You don't know what's behind it and they don't know. Right. And so the book kind of aims at educating them so they can speak a little bit more eloquently on the subjects that they're so fond of. That's kind of the main reason I even got involved in the Epic Times. It was uh, how do we educate people and really give them truth in a way that, you know, I don't believe is getting out there. Um, one thing that strikes me and one thing that we love in Game Changers and what we're trying to do is trying to find young people that are doing exceptional things. And so being a young actor, tell me about that. Tell me how would you get into the world of acting and and what how do you love it and why it inspires you? So both my parents were actors. They met on set. They've been married for I don't know how long. I'm not sure how old they are. They won't tell me <laughs> for whatever reason. Um, but so they met on set, fell in love, got married. Now I'm here. Bada bing, bada boom. And I've always been involved growing right. up because I was homeschooled. I would fly with my dad to wherever he was filming and stay on set, do my schooling there, walk around, meet the cast and crew, hang out with everybody, make friends. So I've grown up in that environment. And at 11 years old, I walk up to my dad. I say, Dad. I'm going to be an actor. And he goes, no, why would you want to do that? It's terrible. The world of rejection. It's an awful place. And I persisted and persisted. And at 12 years old, he put me in acting classes. Mm -hmm. And so three years of acting classes later, I got my first role uh, was Let There Be Light. I played the role of Gus Harkins. I was a primary supporting lead and I had a great time filming it. Yeah. And I fell in love with it even more because, mm. you know, growing up in that realm, you, you learn to appreciate it. Yeah. And so when I was doing it firsthand and I was on the other side of the camera, I was no longer sitting watching the actors. I was the actor yeah. and it was a whole new <laughs> exhilarating feel. 
And so from there, I got the bug and I was just in love with it. Yeah. So I've done four more movies to date, uh, three big picture and a student film. And so I've had an absolute blast filming all of them, wow. you know, and it's been it's been wonderful because growing up in that environment, it made it easy. Yeah. Uh, I will say, though, being conservative and being Christian in Hollywood does not necessarily work. So when this book came out literally last month, I looked at myself right before I hit publish. I'd look at the reflection in the computer. I go, all right, well, I'm no longer going to be a Marvel movie star. And I <laughs> click publish because Hollywood doesn't tolerate it. No. You know, it's tolerance as long as you agree with what they say. So I know that the movies that I'm going to be doing from now on are primarily going to be family friendly, faith based. And the thing is, I have no problem with that. I love promoting ideas of exceptionalism and family values and promoting faith based values to people who might not necessarily hear them. Yeah. And that's what I've been using my platform to do. That's great. That's amazing. And I, I think more of it movies and we could change Hollywood in any kind of way with more, you know, wholesome, great content. I think that would be great for the country. You mentioned something about when you first mentioned to your dad that he was like, oh, no, you're going to deal with the rejections. Tell me about that in the rejection, because, you know, you, in even writing this book, you know that you're probably going to deal with some rejection and it, for writing something like this. Tell me about rejection and acting and how you push through some of that. Yeah. So Hollywood itself is just a cesspool of it's a cesspool within an echo chamber of the same ideas bouncing off each other. And so I have an agent. Yeah, uh, I'm with an agent that's in Atlanta. And so I've had auditions. I I auditioned for Stranger Things quite a few times before they rejected me. I was almost on season four, but you know, I've had so many auditions and I don't get to hear the reasons they don't like me, but it could be, I'm too tall. I'm too fat. I'm too thin. I'm too, I, they don't like my hair length. They don't like my eye color. They don't like this. They don't like that. The second I send in that video for an audition, they're looking for something to not like about me. Yeah. And so with this book and with, with my political beliefs and faith-based standpoint, that's just giving them another round of ammunition. You know, yeah. and so it's a lot of rejection in the world of Hollywood. But how do you I handle it. that rejection? How do you how do you mentally where do you go when you are rejected and they say, hey, you're not the right part? How do you handle that? The same way I handle being rejected by a girl. If I go up and I talk to a girl and I and I shoot my shot and I ask for the number and I get rejected. It's OK, there's 50 more other girls in this room in this party that I could go talk to that I could go meet that I could go introduce myself to. Same thing with the movie. If I get rejected. Okay, yeah, that sucks. I really like that movie. That movie looked like a great movie. But there will be more projects in the future. I have to realize it's, yeah. it's not about focusing on the rejection and the negativity rather than focusing on the positivity and being optimistic about what the future could hold. Right. Because who knows? I could get on a big Netflix TV show. I could do this. I could do that. But I won't know until I try. Right. And so that's what I focus on. I focus on trying and being optimistic rather than the negativity, rather than the rejection. You mentioned a little bit about Hollywood and the way they kind of work. Is there any hope in Hollywood? Are we going to be able to flip things around or is it a lost cause? A little bit of both. Okay. Right. So in one hand, it's a lost cause with the people currently running it. But on the other hand, we have an exceptional generation coming up that could very well turn the tides because politics is downstream of culture. And who controls the culture? Hollywood. I, I speak on this topic everywhere I go about masculinity. And what it's like to be a man and you know you think of a man people think okay big mustache man a lumberjack maybe he's a he's a, he's a big steak grill master he's a firefighter or whatever but what if he's a dad a father a soldier a caretaker see being a man is about being responsible mm -hmm. right and that's what so many people are are realizing we're promoting the wrong idea of a man look at lebron james he's the perfect man to the media he's who we should emulate as I should be looking up to LeBron James as a 20 year old going, I want to be like that when I grow up. Why? Yeah. Here's a dude who advocated for Kyle Rittenhouse's death to his massive Twitter following and then cries and gets people kicked out of his games for heckling him. Like that's a man. That's not a man. Kyle Rittenhouse is a responsible adult going and taking care of people and defending himself when he's attacked. Right. So you're looking at this and the culture is being so negatively influenced by Hollywood. I mean, guys today, they're weak. We, we're, we're lacking physical, mental, and spiritual strength. And the thing is, it's not even necessarily our fault because nobody taught us. Yeah. The school system is teaching us to be weak, to be fragile, to be, to be feminine men. And that's not what it's about. It's about being responsible and taking on responsibilities that, that are going to challenge you, mm -hmm. that are going to make you better.
You know, though, when I look at Hollywood, though, and I look at the, the people there, the stakeholders, the producers, the studios, they seem to be really entrenched in a certain ideology. Yeah. They seem to be deep. It's deep in them. You know, I don't know. I sometimes I lose hope in the sense that I don't know if we as a system worth changing in so many ways like with projects that you've done and other things of kind of going outside of that, uh, I think is very good. And what do you think the future of that is of going outside and doing independent things outside of Hollywood? Yeah, well, there is no future <laughs> if people don't support it. Right. Of course. See, we on uh, sorbostudios.com, we have like an email page for people to send in reviews about the books, about the movies, whatever it is. And they send in these reviews like, oh, we love the movie. We just ordered it and we, we watched it as a family and it was so great. And yes, that's wonderful. Thank you for doing that. But we're not going to be able to make more if you're not telling your friends about it and having your friends go and see it in theaters. It's not helping anybody when you don't promote it. There are 80 million households in America that are Christian or that claim to be Christian. If you get a couple million households to go see these movies in theaters and you can keep making more of them. Because what a lot of people don't realize is to break even on a film, you have to make double your investment. So if a movie costs a million dollars, which is what a lot of independent movies are going for, and that sounds like a lot, but Pirates of the Caribbean is a $380 million right. budget. The Avengers movies are $700 million, but making double their investment, they make two billion. So they make their double and more, and so they keep making them. You know, these movies are struggling to make two, 2.5 million just to recoup what their initial investment is. And they're looking at it going, I don't know if I want to do this again. So people need to get out and promote these movies to their friends and support them by going to theaters rather than, ah, oh, we'll wait for it to come out on DVD or we'll do this and this. Because that is not enough to support it, to keep it going, to keep this kind of push back against the Hollywood agenda. Yeah. Well, you know what? I think that you guys have created a great start and I think that we need more of that. Um, any last words I want to say, I guess, for hope? You know, I like to end this, and, and to me, it's like, how do we get the next generation ready and prepared for what's coming? How do we get them inspired by it? So what is your thoughts on the next generation, and do they have what it takes to take on the obstacles that we're facing? We 100% have what it takes to take on whatever comes at us. We are a generation that's grown up with bullying in real life and online. <laughs> right. And I was, a, I was a chubby kid growing up and I was bullied for it and it made me a better person, right? I know I can take it. I know other people can take it. I know that we as a generation are strong enough. It's just a matter of, are we going to do it? If I could, I'm gonna shamelessly, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna shamelessly plug this. <laughs> this is a sarcastic dictionary. This teaches people what they need to know. Right. You know, this is a good way for people to get involved. DC Drano, Mike Lindell, Mike Huckabee, and Andrew Clavin have all given endorsements. The forward was by Brandon Tatum. It is, it's a matter of, do people want to get involved? Right. So the question is, can, it's not, can we take it? Can we, are we sure we can fight back against it? Is, are we willing to go up against it? Because we can do it, but will we do it is right. the question. And I think we will. I, I think what we're seeing right now is a matter of, everything going on around us and people are finally starting to wake up whether it's in the hollywood culture with the movies like the family friendly faith-based movies people are finally seeing or it's what's happening in offices all around the country where we're seeing what the highest office is saying and we're realizing we're finally waking up yeah. thank god thank god and so we can fight back we can definitely make a mark and leave our like promote our message of faith family and freedom it's just a matter of will we right. and i hope we will because i'm doing it so i hope people will join me Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming by. One last plug. I want you to show your book um, and tell the movies or anything that you have coming out. Yeah. So Left Behind movie comes out Easter. Miracle in East Texas comes out a little bit before that. Make sure to stay updated. Follow me on all my socials. The name is right there. It's really easy. It's a weird Irish Gaelic spelling. I don't know. Blame my parents for that one. Sorbostudios.com. You can stay up to date on everything. You can find copies of the book and well, you can leave feedback. Braden, thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Me.